Welcome to Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. This program is here every week at this time, providing a satsang service, a chance to get exposed to the teachings of the Masters of the East. Today's program is titled, A Culture of Love, the Heart of Mysticism. But before I get to the main discourse, a couple of short readings. This first one is titled, The Third Eye Center. This is from Kripal Singh. We are in physical bodies. We are conscious entities. We are so much tied up with the mind and matter that we cannot differentiate ourselves. We have to leave the physical, transcend the astral, go further beyond the causal, supercausal, and reach the true home of our Father. That is the true destination for each one of us. This is also from Kirpal Singh. This single or third eye provides an ingress into the spiritual world, the kingdom of God, now a lost realm to most of us. Of this inlet or ingress, little is known by the people at large. This is from Hazura Baba Sawan Singh. In the center behind and above the eyes, there is an aperture. On this side of it is the material world in which we are now living. And on the other side is the astral world. And finally from Kirpal Singh, To have inner experiences of godly light and sound is no small thing. And really only the fortunate few blessed from above, receive them. On the same theme of rising above body consciousness, this is titled Going Beyond the Universe. It's by Param Puja Shahai Swami a disciple of Maharishi Mehi Paramhans in the lineage of St. Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. God is perceivable only through the soul, but our individual soul has become surrounded or covered by several sheaths or subtle bodies, astral, causal, etc. So long as it remains in the captivity of these various subtle bodies and the physical body, it will be under the knowledge of these bodies and organs only. Will be under illusory knowledge only. And will not be able to realize God. In order to know him, the Jiva Atma, or the individual soul, shall have to liberate itself from these bondages. Only one who is able to liberate himself from the body and subtle bodies is able to lift himself beyond the universe. Sri Shahai Swami Some thoughts, some commentary. Here Shahai Swami speaks of the practice of inner light and sound meditation, also known as Surat Shabd Yoga, the spiritual practice of Santmat, and how it is possible during meditation to transcend the physical body or rise above body consciousness, transcend the astral subtle body, transcend the causal or akashic subtle body, ascend beyond the mental subtle body, and shed the etheric subtle body. All that remains is one's true naked identity, Atman, the self or soul. After stripping off the garments of the outer worlds, the soul exclaims, I am that, I am that. In this sense, the soul has ascended beyond all the universes of space-time and experiences something of knowing itself in the timeless state or akal, or true eternal realm. 
सात लोक Heart of mysticism, the yoga of love, the way of the lover and the beloved, a culture of love, a sat song of love. In Sant Mat, there is emphasis on light and sound experience, but there is also love. If you read the poetry of Kabir, any of the classic sants of India, it's not just light and sound; it's love, light and sound. It is meditation done. In a spirit of bhakti or love and devotion for the supreme being, love is the only reality. All else is illusion. Cultivating love is one of the central teachings of mysticism, east and west. In India, masters often use the term bhakti, which means love and devotion. Someone once asked Yogani Mataji of the Radha Swami faith. How can one sit so still, repeat only holy names, and think of God constantly? Madhuji serenely replied, "By falling in love, because when we are truly in love, nothing but the beloved can enter the mind." So the secret of Surat Shabd Yoga and all of mysticism. Is not necessarily practice, 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 and more practice, but love, to be so devoted to one's Lord that nothing can stand in the way. This and nothing else is the truth of Sant Mat, the teachings of the Masters, Yogani Mataji. Until he finds rest in the beloved's embrace, a verse from Rabia of Basra, one of the earliest of the Sufis, one of the earliest known Sufi mystics of Islam. This is from the book The Essential Kabir, translated by M. G. Gupta. Without bhakti or spiritual love and devotion, nobody can swim across the vast and deep ocean of this samsara, this world of changes. Even if one makes use of thousands of ways and means, but if one takes to the word and develops love for shabd, the sound current, one will 100% go. To his eternal abode. This is from the Radha Swami discourses of Maharaj Sahib. In Sant Mat, the teachings of the saints, great importance has been attached to bhakti or love. It is the essential condition. Of absolute necessity, in Sant Mat. If there are all other attributes but no bhakti, then there is nothing. If there are all other attributes but no bhakti, then there is nothing. Maharaj Sahib, in his spiritual discourses. The following is from the Amazon Kindle ebook called "The Inward Journey of the Soul" by Swami Vyasanand Baba, a disciple of 
Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj and Maharishi Mehi Paramhans of the Sant Telsi Sahib lineage of Sant Mat. On the five levels of spiritual love, or bhakti, Five levels of spiritual devotion or love, bhakti. One, not a genuine kind of love. The mind is always contemplating matters of mundane attainments. But with the body, outwardly, some virtuous deeds are done, even though it is of the lowest kind with sporadic acts of service. The mind will eventually turn to God. That's one stage of bhakti. Another stage of bhakti. Number two, the body is involved in spiritual acts and there is an effort on the devotee's part to attach the mind to God. Three, both the mind and the body are engaged in meditation. However, due to material attachments, the devotee's mind becomes distracted and is engaged in immoral actions. Upon realization of this deviation, the devotee immediately recognizes the error and seeks to make corrections. Stage 4 of Bhakti The devotee loves the Supreme Being with his or her mind, heart and soul and longs for the Divine like a fish out of water, yearns for water. He or she does not care about food, sleep, the company of others, and does not wish for anything other than God. Sometimes, in yearning for the divine, one swoons. There are many stories of saints who became unconscious, struck by divine love. True devotees become unconcerned with bodily needs and do not worry about loss or gain. They are not jealous of others' progress, nor do they worry about criticism or honor and dishonor. Because of their state of ecstasy and carelessness to worldly conventions, others think of such devotees as crazy. But in this state they enjoy the bliss of God, who is the ocean of love. The devotees have a single focus, and that is to see God. All other longings vanish from their hearts. And stage five of bhakti, according to Swami Vyasanand, in his wonderful new Sant Mat book called The Inward Journey of the Soul. In this type of love, the devotee becomes like the beloved God. The soul is an inseparable part of the divine. And through devotion, it becomes divine just as ice made up of water, after melting, becomes the water. This kind of devotion leads to the union of the soul and the Supreme Soul, God. The five stages or five levels of spiritual devotion or bhakti, according to Swami Vyasanand. Culture of love, the North Indian Sant tradition of bhakti. It's not just light and sound meditation, but love, light and sound. This reading comes from the Narada Bhakti Sutras, the Book of Love, an Indian scripture devoted to cultivating bhakti, love and devotion. Whosoever amongst us believes in this auspicious gospel of Narada and has faith in it becomes a lover of God 
and attains the highest beatitude, the goal of life. This paragraph comes from Hazur Maharaj Raisalagram in his spiritual classic known as Prem Patra Radhaswami, The Love Discourses of the Lord of the Soul. This is a path of bhakti as well as inner light and sound. All saints and Swamiji Maharaj in particular have in their bani or hymns, their mystic poetry, laid great stress upon engendering love. The idea is that the task can be accomplished quickly and easily with the help of love. Mere renunciation cannot afford so much advantage, nor can mere comprehension of the faith confer such a benefit. All activities in the world are going on because of love and desire. If one does not have any feeling of love, or he has no interest in the matter, he can do nothing. For the real spiritual welfare of their soul, it is therefore desirous that all jivas or souls develop real love for the true supreme being, says Huzur Maharaj Raisalagram in Prem Patra Radhaswami. In the north we have Kabir, Nanak, Mirabai, Tulsi Das, and others. Their verses show that love or bhakti of God is not a thing which we produce in ourselves by extensive brooding or self-hypnotism or by any other method. It is a permanent flame slowly burning in the caverns of our hearts. Only, however, when it gains strength through study and association with other devotees or satsangis and the company of the satguru do we come to know of it. There is a spiritual longing in the heart of man, indistinct and undefined, but steady like a flame, tapering upwards to the divine goal. There is nothing higher than the culture of love. Hearing and singing the praises of God stimulates its growth until it, it's, until it, ex, it ascends higher and higher eventually reaching God. I'm going to reread this wonderful paragraph by M. G. Gupta. It's from his book, Indian Mysticism, Rig Veda to the Present Day, published in Agra by M. G. Publishers. There is a spiritual longing in the heart of man, indistinct and undefined but steady like a flame, tapering upwards to the divine goal. There is nothing higher than the culture of love. Hearing and singing the praises of God stimulates its growth until it ascends higher and higher, eventually reaching God. This is from Guru Kabir. So plunge into the truth, find out who the teacher is, believe in the great sound. Kabir is considered a kind of founder of Sant Mat, although he was not the first Sant in this Kali Yuga. At the same time, it can be said that there is a tradition which espouses the view that Kabir incarnated during each of the yugas of time. So in a previous age, actually three previous ages, he came to found the spiritual path in the world. So in that sense, he is a kind of eternal guru or founding guru. 
But the earliest sonnets appear in the 12th century and beyond. But Kabir certainly was the first sonnet to make this path of the masters something followed by millions of people all over India. And so in that sense, he's perceived to be a kind of central figure or pillar. His verses are very mystical about inner light and sound experience, the ascension of the soul back to God again. But at the same time, they are very much in the tradition of love and devotion, the path of bhakti. My name is James Bean. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today's program is about a culture of love, love, light, and sound on the path. Stay tuned for more after these messages. Spiritual Awakening Radio, a culture of love, the love bhakti aspect of the teachings of the masters. This is a paragraph from Baba Devi Sahib. This spiritual path and its destination is divine love. The remover of difficulties is one spiritual teacher who has given you the secret knowledge or spiritual guidance and experience. Baba Devi Sahib wrote a lot about love and devotion, saying that God is love, the universe was created through love and is sustained by love. Baba Devi Sahib had a great emphasis on love or bhakti, very much in harmony with a contemporary spiritual master of those days by the name of Hazur Maharaj Vaisalagram of the Radhaswami faith. Both of those great masters had a great emphasis upon love and devotion, prem and bhakti, as being essential in order to practice meditation successfully. Baba Devi Sahib grew up in Hathras, was a great devotee of Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. And when he got older, he moved to Agra and spent some time as the guest of Hazur Maharaj, Vaisalagram, and attended the Radhaswami Satsang in Agra for a period of time. He didn't really adopt the Radhaswami faith. He continued to follow the Sant Mat meditation practice and mantras he was given in Hathras, but was great friends with Hazur Maharaj of the Radhaswami faith. Each practiced a different version of Sant Mat, a slightly different version with different Simran words, different mantras, but were quite close. Eventually, Baba Devi Sahib moved to the city of Muradabad and began his own spiritual mission and founded an ashram there wrote many wonderful books, had a great emphasis on love and devotion. He quoted spiritual poetry, including many Sufi poets. Many of his writings are in Hindi, recently republished by Swami Vyasanand Satsang. Hopefully more of the writings of Baba Devi Sahib will be translated into English one day. His ashram in Muradabad last year was renovated thanks to the efforts of Swami Vyasanand, and more people attend satsang there than ever before. The Baba Devi Sahib Santmat Ashram in Muradabad lives on as good as new. Rumi 
once said, The people of this world are like the three butterflies in front of a candle's flame. The first one went closer and said, I know about love. The second one touched the flame lightly with his wings and said, I know how love's fire can burn. The third one threw himself into the heart of the flame and was consumed. He alone knows what true love is, says Rumi. Kabir says, go deeper, past thoughts into silence, past silence into stillness, past stillness into the heart. Let love consume all that is left of you. I want to share with you a discourse about love and devotion titled The Way of the Lover and the Beloved, Bhakti. Bhakti Yoga, according to the Dictionary of Mysticism, is the yoga of love, the quest of union with the Divine Spirit through Bhakti Marg, the path of love and devotion. That definition comes from the Dictionary of Mysticism, edited by Frank Gaynor, published by the Philosophical Library. Bhakti is a Sanskrit word for love and devotion, and love is the quintessential truth of all religion, spirituality, and mysticism. In the New Testament, St. Paul said that love is the most excellent way. The Bhagavad Gita and other world scriptures say the very same thing. The mystic lovers of history have taught that love is God and God is love. God is an infinite ocean of love, and each soul is a drop from that ocean. By approaching spiritual practices, such as Simran, the repetition of names of God, prayer, the singing of hymns, or meditation practice with an attitude of love and devotion, prim and bhakti, we elevate our consciousness. The practice of love brings us into harmony with the Supreme Being, our own true nature, and with everyone else. As it says in the Hindu Upanishads, even as the sun shines and fills all space with light, so shines the Lord of love and fills the hearts of all created beings. I very much respect people who are drawn to the poetry of Rumi. They may not even realize what's causing them to be drawn to Rumi. There's beautiful poetry there with Rumi. But for many people, especially in the Western world, it may be the very first time they've ever encountered a spiritual master, a sansat guru type of soul. There's just something about Rumi. People are drawn to him. It's not just about poetry. It's the divine inspiration, the magnetism, the divinity behind the poetry. First contact with a spiritual master. Others have discovered the poetry of Kabir, the love poetry of Guru Kabir, and find themselves drawn to Kabir's verses like moths to the flame. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio after the break, more from these great souls of the East, the Sants, the Masters, the Sansat Gurus, today about a culture of love, the love aspect of the path of the masters. Stay tuned. Some sayings of Guru Kabir. The world has fallen in love with a dream. Says Kabir, for millions of years you have slept. 
this morning, will you not wake? That saying is very much pregnant with meaning, implying the existence of the wheel of transmigration, the transmigration and reincarnation of souls into many different species, life after life after life, as the centuries go whizzing past. Will we make progress this time through, during this incarnation? We are sentient beings with access to knowledge, free will, and have the power to make choices. Will we focus our attention on the divine? Will we take advantage of this golden opportunity of life? The New Age movement always teaches that human beings will just keep reincarnating as human beings over and over and over again. But the masters of history have always said that you never know. Who knows where you'll end up in a future life? Who knows where the wheel will spin to next? People have lots of beliefs, but thoughts are here today and gone tomorrow, like a puff of smoke or a cloud or fog. Who knows about somebody's theory about the afterlife, but we are here now. We are here today. The masters teach life is a golden opportunity. Will we make progress this time through? For millions of years you have slept, says Kabir. This morning, will you not wake? Kabir says, if you can't find where your soul is hidden, for you the world will never be real. The truth is, you turned away yourself and decided to go into the dark alone. Now you are tangled up in others and have forgotten what you once knew. Kabir says, when the mind becomes calm, then the truth is revealed. Hiding in this cage of visible matter is the invisible life bird. Pay attention to her. She is singing your song. A verse of Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry by Swami G. Maharaj. O soul, who are you? And whence have you come? You are a ray from Parush, the Supreme Being, and an inhabitant of the purely spiritual region. This is from Rumi. Let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will not lead you astray. From the Shabdavali hymn book of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. The guru of the gurus, the great grandfather or Adi guru of Sant Mat in the contemporary period. From the source of the divine ocean, God opens a portal to the light. Awaken that resplendent light within you. Repeat the name of the Supreme Being and secure Him. This is from Saint Isaac the Syrian. The Syriac mystics are not directly related to the Sants of India, but I've always had a lot of respect for them. And they were a huge influence on the Sufis once upon a time, and are quite advanced. 
Saint Isaac of Nineveh once said, descend into your heart and in it you will find the ladder which leads to the kingdom of God. If you love truth, be a lover of silence. Silence like the sunlight will illuminate you in God. This is a saying from Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. By seeking the path within, one will go beyond the sensory realm and will attain the state of oneness. Back to the Syriac saints of Mesopotamia. This is Abraham of Nathpar on silence and meditation. There is a silence of the tongue. There is a silence of the whole body. There is a silence of the soul. There is a silence of the mind. And there is a silence of the spirit. Kabir said, the essence of life is in remembering God. Ultimately, whether we make progress this time through or not, is a matter of divine grace. This is from Hazur Maharaj, Raisalagram of the Radhaswami faith. It is only by the grace of Radhaswami Dayal, the compassionate Lord of the soul, that the disciple can cross this ocean of samsara easily. This ocean of the world of changes, this ocean of life, called by many in the East, samsara. It's only divine grace that lets us truly succeed you're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more after this break. Culture of love, the way of love and devotion, prem and bhakti, today on Spiritual Awakening Radio. It's not just inner light and sound, but inner love, light and sound. The ideal vision for living a spiritual life on planet Earth. Here's a beautiful poem by the 16th century mystic, Sant Dadu Dayal of Rajasthan, who outlined his vision of the spiritual life to be pursued during our time here on planet Earth. I often post this online and often mention it because it embodies the whole path, doing it some justice in poetic form. Sant Dadu Dayal, recognize the path to your beloved, O travelers, and take the route of the anguished lover in separation. Keep the Master's grace in your thoughts and reflect on his pure teachings. Develop love and devotion with endearment and keep the thought of the Creator always before you. Merge yourself into God like water in water. Fix your mind within by following the path of the sound current. A yearning will arise. Make then an intense and anguished call 
Repeat the name of your beloved day and night again and again. With care and thought, word and deed, you will cross to the other shore. Recognize the path to your beloved, O travelers, and take the route of the anguished lover in separation. Keep the Master's grace in your thoughts and reflect on his pure teachings. Develop love and devotion with endearment and keep the thought of the Creator always before you. Merge yourself into God like water in water. Fix your mind within by following the path of the sound current. A yearning will arise. Make then an intense and anguished call. Repeat the name of your beloved day and night again and again. With care and thought, word and deed, you will cross to the other shore. Those verses of Saint Dadu Dayal, the compassionate mystic, embody the whole path, summing up the teachings so nicely. The path of the masters, the path of the mystics of the East, is focused on God, described as the Beloved. The focus of this path is not on some astral presiding deity or some lower being or some state of consciousness far, far away from God. Rather, it is a path of intimacy with God, a God-focused path. The Supreme Being is called the Beloved. This is the path of love, light, and sound, of yearning, as well as meditation. This is the path where one is given the secrets of meditation practice by a living master. We receive instruction. We are mentored by a living teacher, not a book, not a tradition, not a religion not our own ego in charge, but we are mentored, we are inspired, we are guided by a living master who initiates his or her students into the mysteries of the kingdom of God and provides not only inspiration and instruction, but a spiritual charge to bring us into not just intellectual knowledge about the meditation techniques, but the actual experience of inner light and sound. We reflect on his teachings. We internalize the teachings of the Master. And as a result of this process, we keep our thought upon the Creator always. A true Master will not keep focusing on himself or herself all of the time, 24-7. A true master will focus you on God. That is the classic role of the master, as described by the Sants of India, the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures as well, all of these wonderful collections of mystic poetry. The focus is not just upon the master all of the time, day and night, as centerfold, master, master, master. A true master will not put your focus always on them all of the time. A true master will focus you on the supreme being. Dadu says, keep the thought of the creator always before you. 
the meditation practice. Merge yourself into God like water in water. Fix your mind within by following the path of the sound current. Repeat the name of your beloved, the Simran of repeating God's name, the mantra of God's name. Repeat the name of your beloved day and night again and again. With care and thought, word and deed, you will cross this ocean of samsara. You will cross to the other shore.